Greetings and welcome to our weekly educational rounds here at Seclair, where we attempt to bring out some positive type of enhancements to your life that are practical and you can do on an everyday basis in your life. Uh, today I'm joined by a couple colleagues and I am Jim Ellermeyer. I'm a behavioral health therapist here at Seclair and I'm joined by two of my colleagues. On my left would be Nicole Engler. I'm a PA student from University of Mount Union. And on my right? Jeffrey Stebbins. I'm a physician assistant student from St. Francis University. And I don't, I'm unaware that most people out there would not be familiar or appreciate the experience that physician's assistant uh, go through in their training. Uh, where I know that I've referred to it in the past is more of an endurance test and uh, rather, rather than a learning experience. And if you stand at the end, you win? Correct. So true. So t talk to us a little bit about that. The experience that we're in? Yes. So, talk, talk to us about the not having a life. Okay, so it's just that, not having a life. Um, it is because we uh, would love to work in the medical field as physician assistants, we dedicate our about two years of our life, one year being in the classroom, and then the next year being out on rotations. Many different schools have different number of rotations that they have to go through, but they're usually around five to six weeks each, um, uh, rotating from position to position. Tell me, uh, Nikki, do you believe that you're participating in your life at present? Do you believe you're participating in life? Um, I wish I could be more. Right now I'm, a, I'm participating in the life of a PA student, which is mostly studying and um, working towards my end goal of passing my boards and becoming a physician assistant. Um, if I was participating in my life, I would be doing more fun things, um, enjoying more time with my friends and family and doing the things that I enjoy. But I know that come August, I can be me again and live more in my life. Well, we're, what we're going to tr attempt to do is to help people uh, be that way every day on a daily basis and before we go any further if everyone out there would possibly reset their clocks to Buddha standard time which is the present moment and I'll ask you Jeff what time is it it's now Nikki right now it's right now and it's always right now it's always right now o'clock so at right now o'clock let's uh, let's be here so what you're talking about is having a perhaps a human experience right mm -hmm. a human experience uh, there are some people out there who take the philosophy that we are spiritual beings who are having a human experience a spiritual beings to have a human experience and quite often what people go through their life they go through their life doing rather than being and that kind of sounds to me like where you're at Nikki yeah sounds right. doing rather than being Yes. Doing rather than being. So when when we're doing rather than being, we ask ourselves in September, where did summer go? Or we ask ourselves, how did it get to be Christmas already? Or you meet somebody's child and says, how did you get so big? Okay. So the idea is is that how can we how can we get to be being? Okay. And the real the real truth, Jeff, is that nothing needs to be done. Nothing needs to be done. How would you how would you take that uh, phrase, Nikki? Um, that every day is a choice, just like you always tell us. Nothing you can choose to make certain goals for yourself. I need to grocery shop today. I need to write this paper, and I need to spend two hours with my husband or something. But you don't need to do that. So you set those goals, but you need to choose to do the things that make you happy so we can choose to do things and isn't have you ever met somebody like they're going through the holidays or preparing all these dinners all these what whatever the minutia or murder that people involve even around a simple thing is planning a picnic okay have you ever been to one of those events and the person who planned it is, is, is having the worst time there mm -hmm. yes definitely so tell, talk, tell us a little bit about that in your own life Jeff in my own life, well, when you have tests coming up or exams coming up, or right now what we're all dealing with as PA students, the board's coming up, we say that we need to do this, we need to study, we need to get this done, but really it's the choice that we're making to get this done in order to better ourselves. So, like you said before, and how Nikki said, everything in life is really all about choices and what you, how you choose to live life, I guess, is what it's going to be. Absolutely, and sometimes what we do, and I'm sure that everyone out there in the audience can relate to this, myself also, also I paint everyone with this brush that quite often we get caught up in doing. Mm -hmm. We get caught up in doing. 
Do you ever get up in the morning, Jeff, and say, what do I have to do today? The first thing that I say, I think, every day. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki, could you, could you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, how many people get up there and say, what do I have to do today? And what's, what's, how does that start off your day with? Anxiety? Anxiety, Worry. stress, Bad busyness. Thing. Time management, mm -hmm. the time, the time crunch. Oh, my. So, and the real truth is that you don't have to do anything that day. You really and truly don't have to do anything that day. So perhaps what we could do is start small and create a, creating an image of yourself. Create an image of yourself, Nikki. Creating an image of yourself, Jeff, in the present moment and, and where, we're at, where we're at right now. Uh, doing some socializing. Do you ever do any socializing? With my PA friends. Okay, studying. well, they're, they are friends, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Is there any socializing in your life? And I'm not talking about uh, imaginary social media things. <laughs> yes, I mean, I tried to set aside some time to separate myself from my schooling and my work life just to keep myself sane. You have FaceTime with human beings? From With human beings, yes. Okay, great, great. Do you ever do anything that scares you, Nikki? Do you ever do, do, you ever do anything to step outside of your comfort zone? Mm, yeah. Such as? Well, I guess it's things that I'm forced to do that forces me to step out of my comfort zone. Okay. Like giving a speech giving or a like speech. a presentation for school. Okay. So what we do is, is by participating in the human experience, Jeff, and that's, those, those can be scary things for sure. So what we start off by doing simple things, and uh, quite often we make our lives so complicated. And what we do here at Seclair, which is an integrative uh, holistic psychiatric facility, we do not treat diagnoses, we treat people. And, and what we try to do is help people who have such complicated lives, and they've made themselves complicated, become on camp complicated, and help people understand what the power of simplicity is. A simple thing, Jeff, such as going into a store and asking for change for a dollar. Going into a store and asking to use a restroom. Okay? Calling up and, let's say, making an appointment. Calling back half an hour later and canceling it. Uh, being in a store and asking the, the person at the produce if they have any fresher uh, melons in the back. Do you ever do that? I have not. You have not? Okay. And these are some of the things where we, we, we step out of being the doing, okay? And, in, and into the being, okay? And also, how about doing something that you're good at? What are, you, what, what are some of the things that you're good at, Nikki? A couple of things, besides putting up with me. <laughs> Shopping. Shopping. You go to shopping? <laughs> okay. 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 How about you, Jeff? Doing some things that you're good at. Um, running. Running? You good at running? I like to think I'm good at running sometimes. Okay. Okay. So the idea is here that what we want to do is build on positive experiences. We want to build on positive experience, build on positivity. Quite often, human beings have the lenses in their glasses reversed, and we tend to focus on the negative in our lives, and we, we, don't, we don't look at the positive. Okay? So in 12-step recovery, quite often what we'll ask people who have the, a case of the poor me's is, or woe is me, is to ask individuals to make a gratitude list. Do you ever make a gratitude list, Jeff? I don't think I've ever made a graduate. Okay, how about you, Nikki? Yeah, okay, and quite often what we'll ask people to do, and when we take things out from between the ears and put them concrete out in front of us, they have some more meaning, okay? Mm -hmm. they, they, take the, they take it out of the imaginary and put it into reality, put it right in front of us. Take these words and these thoughts and these sounds and these images out of our brains and put them out in front of us and give them some shape and substance to them. So on a gratitude list, what we do is list we list everything that's going right in our lives everything that's going right in our lives, everything that we're grateful for. And then we put the, on the other side, we'll put the challenges that we're facing. And I have really, truly yet to run into the person whose side of the scale wasn't heavier with the things that are going well in their life. And so many things that, that we don't appreciate. Tell me some good things about your life, Jeff. Well, I have great friends, great family, good support system behind me trying to get through PA school. Um... Yeah, that's some good things. Okay, do you ever, when, when times are a little tough for you, when you're facing some challenges, do you ever sit down and say those things to yourself? Do you ever give yourself those positive affirmations? I guess I will now. <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell, me some, tell me some good things that are going on in your life, Nikki. Um, I just got a new puppy. Wow. Yeah, so that's fun and exciting. Um, 
I just got a new apartment. I'm about to finish PA school. There's lots of good things. I guess there is. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the idea is that do you ever make these positive affirmations? How often do we, off everyone out there listening today, how often do we list the negative things that are going on in our life? More often than we should. Well, absolutely. How many times has a, a person come up to you and say, boy, you ought to hear about the day I had? Does anybody ever come up to you and tell what a good day they've had? Sometimes. 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 Isn't that isn't that good to hear? It is. Yeah, how does that make you feel when somebody comes and tells you that? It makes you feel good for them. It makes you feel good for them and good for yourself, so you might want to share that experience with others also. One of the things is, is to make others feel good about themselves. Make others feel good about themselves is, is a way to be in the moment, be in the experience, and be a human being. Uh, we had a young lady here today, here at Seclair, and eating is one of our specialties, if you ever want to stop and see us, at 341 Story Road, Export PA, 15632. Uh, and what we, what we do here is we try to provide nourishment uh, to all of us here, and like I say, we all we all love to eat. So today we had a really great, uh, great. I don't even know what you'd call it. Quiche. Quiche. Yeah. It was it was really great, really really wonderful. And when we were there, and what we then we told this young lady who prepared it, what a nice job she did. Mm -hmm. What a really nice job she did. And have you ever been experiencing in life when did you ever did you ever tell your partner that you cared about them? Did you ever tell them how they did such a good job? Well, no, they know I they know I they know I feel that way. Really. Are you a mind reader? I'm not. Okay. Not yet. Do you have a crystal ball that works? I wish. Uh-huh. So the idea is is to participate. Helping other people feel good about themselves helps you helps you feel good about you. It, mm -hmm. it increases that well. It charges up charges up that energy, that life battery inside you. Inside you. So what we want to try to do, do you ever do you ever seek compliments? Not to be arrogant or uh, narcissistic. Do you ever Say, do you ever ask somebody, hey, did I do a good job on that? What's, yeah. Have you ever gone with somebody, let's say a partner, have you ever gone to a partner and say, what do you like about me? Why, what, what attracts you to me? What holds you, what holds you? And you ask them? Yeah. Okay, you'd be surprised how many people have never asked that question. Mm -hmm. have you ever done that, Jeff? Yeah, because I think everybody wants to hear the good things about themselves sometimes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Try to give a little reinforcement for Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So when we're dealing with people with low self-esteem and, and low self-concept, do you think that would be something that's natural for them to do, to go ask somebody? No. Very, very difficult. Very difficult. Which is the idea that we build on positive experiences, we work things up, and we try to get clarification on our, our life plans. Okay? Uh, so one of the hardest things to do is to be participating in life and being is motivation, which is a topic for about 150 of these educational rounds. So tell me about motivation. Tell me what gets you motivated. Um, as far as PA school? Um, just as far as life, getting anything done. Happiness, I guess. The goals that you set for yourself, um, getting married, having kids, um, being happy. Mm-hmm. That motivates you to do what you're doing now? Mm-hmm. Okay. How about you, Jeff? I know that you're not familiar with procrastination at all. Oh, uh, not at all. Mm -mm. So what, what do you have to, to say to our friends out there that perhaps may be a procrastinator? Uh, well, I would say uh, do what I do and set some uh, plans in the distant future. So like planning a trip, which I just did just to try to look toward and get me motivated to get to that point and something to look forward to mm -hmm. because that's kind of how I've gotten through. Mm -hmm. Well, sure. And if you ever get to the Procrastinators Hall of Fame, you can see my statue that's right out front that will greeting you as you come in. So the idea in order to motivate ourselves, how do we do that? Who are, who are some of the people that motivate you? You don't have to name names. Are there, are there some people in your life that motivate you? Yeah. Okay, Jeff. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Definitely. Are there uh, are there maybe certain songs, uh, certain things that you read, certain friends that you talk to that can motivate you? Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Are there are there situations, place, people, places, things, circumstances, events where you can place yourself that motivate you? Mm -hmm. So the idea is, can if we can't get that spark of motivation going, can we at least place ourselves in a position to be motivated? Can we do that? We can. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So one of the hardest things to do is, is start. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. One of the absolutely hardest things to do is start. And quite often, uh, being the doing things that we do, there's so much there's so much busyness in our homes, isn't there? there is. There's so much busyness in our lives, so mm-hmm. much chatter, so much so much nonsense, so much so much that interference that gets in our way. Okay? So let's say that you're preparing a, a presentation for PA school. Okay? And that uh, you have all these doodads and gadgets and little things you can look at in your house. Books, things to play with, things to contemplate, whatever. Anything to distract you from your purpose. Have you ever, have you ever taken yourself out of those situations to get something done? Sometimes. Sometimes? Mm-hmm. And, like when it's getting down close to the wire, like the test is tomorrow. And I've procrastinated and gotten distracted the previous four days. Mm-hmm. It's time to remove yourself from the situation. And so what you're talking about is, is changing your environment, mm-hmm. okay? And if there's anything that will help a person accentuate their life and become a human being, is to be grateful. Is to be grateful. Do you ever set anything aside to be grateful for every day? Not every day. Okay. So, Jeff, I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to challenge rather rather than by getting up in the morning and saying, what is my plan for today? You can get up in the morning and say, what am I, what am I grateful about today? Starting off your day with what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm grateful about today. And our homework assignment out there for everyone uh, listening and uh, watching today is to write down three positive things about your life every day. Three things that are going well in your world. It could be... and no no computer stuff no no word processing this has to be this has to be pencil or pen on paper and you have to actually make these things happen and it doesn't have to be anything fantastic like you had a new job or a new vacation or started a new relationship it could be simply that you didn't trip and fall when you got out of bed this morning and, and that you had breakfast and and the things and you weren't out of shampoo when you got in the shower that ever happened to you uh, no, soap, not shampoo. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> okay, how about you, Jeff? Did you ever, you ever get into something and you, it wasn't there? Oh, yeah. Okay. Especially, like, this morning when we were cooking and you reach for something in the cupboard and it's not there. Mm-hmm. So improvise. Well, sure. So the idea is, is the idea of these educational rounds is to help fill people's cupboards. And when they're in a particular stage or area of their life and they can reach in and they can pull something out. Mm-hmm. However, in order for it to, to be in there, it has to be put in there, correct? Okay, well, great. Well, we're certainly glad that uh, everyone joined uh, us for our educational round today. We're going to offer our usual free prescription, which is fruits, nuts, and vegetables. Uh, unplug your television and perhaps take up fishing. And for a truly mindful experience, what do you do? Fish without bait. You fish without bait. And until the next time, uh, Mr. Jeff is going to take us out. And your assignment, of course, as always, is to be good to yourself. To continue the conversation, please like us on Facebook, plus us on Google+, Plus, or follow us on Twitter under Seclair Life. You can also find this and other Grand Rounds on YouTube.com slash Sinclair Video and find audio versions on iTunes, Stitcher, Speaker, and iPhone Radio, or iHeart Radio. And please visit www.sinclair.com for more about us and other articles on our great blog. Thank you so much for joining us today.